Then the chat show appearances. There were even toys fashioned in my image. But now I have finally made the leap to where I really belong. The movies! This is the story of tea. From its accidental discovery thousands of years ago to the news that's rattling cups and saucers in two continents this very day. We are going to change the world one cup at a time! <laughs> The journey starts almost 5,000 years ago, when the whole tea thing began. Legend has it that Emperor Shen Nong was sitting in the shade of a camellia tree, enjoying his favourite drink. There you go, Chuck. One cup of boiling water. Just how you like it. Nice one, Nancy. You are a smasher. When some leaves fell from the tree, what followed was to change the world forever. The water in his cup changed colour. What on earth? Uh, 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 uh. Lesser men would have slung it in the flower beds and demanded a fresh cup. But not your man Shen Nong. Oh no. Curious and inquisitive, he took a sip. Nancy, that is blooming delicious. Woo! Tea was born. Biscuits, they came later. I wanted to find out what happened as a result of Shenong's amazing discovery. That's why I've come here, to this Chinese museum in England's capital, London. Uh, uh, this is... Uh... Who is it? Caroline. Uh, Caroline, of course it is. Caroline. Now, Caroline is an expert in all things Chinese. I gather you've got a degree, Caroline. Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Well, so have I. Now, I think you have something for us. Yes. This is a ceramic bowl from 3000 BC. Ooh. Just like the one Emperor Shenong drank from. Wow. No handle, eh? That must have been difficult, especially if his cuppa was straight out of the kettle. <laughs> oh, yes. The intricate detailing, the meticulous paint craft. It's just... Uh, uh, you knocked me, Caroline. You did. Everyone saw that. You've knocked it on the floor, and now you're going to lose your job. And probably your pension scheme, too. Cut! Cut! Ah, oh, there, there. A little bit of glue, a little bit of love. It'll be right as rain. You watch. Lovely arms. So, Caroline, tea in those days, did it come in pyramid bags? No, it didn't, monkey. In the Han Dynasty, tea leaves were crushed and squashed into hard blocks like these called tea bricks. See? Rock hard. Oh, that's incredible. And if you fancied a cuppa, you'd hack a bit off, powder it up, put it into boiling water, and you'd have a cup of tea, just like we have now, though. And how did most people take it back then, Caroline? Milk one sugar? No. Two sugars? No. Not artificial sweetness, surely? No, people didn't take milk or sugar in their tea for another 4,000 years, monkey. Ah, the fools! They were only a walk to the fridge away from brilliance. Well, thanks, Caroline, even if you did knock me. Come on, then. You be mum. Careful. I'd learnt a lot. But what happened next? How did tea end up in its rightful home? England ahoy! The Wonder Brew reached our shores thanks to the tea clipper races of the 19th century. Captains in pointy hats would load up their ships with tea in the Chinese port of Taipang, then race back to Blighty, toot sweet, crew against crew, ship against ship, man against scurvy. The first ship to arrive home got the most wonga for their cargo. Those brave, brave sailors. As we headed north past somewhere, on the next leg of my investigation, I realised not much has changed in the world of tea, but lots has changed in the way we live our lives. Today, we recycle, we turn off the tap when we brush our teeth, I even reuse sticky plasters that I fish out of swimming pools. But, most importantly, we realise that the way we live our lives affects the environment and 
and the lives of others. What we buy here has an effect a whole continent away. It's really important for us to know where things come from and how they're made. We drink 8 billion cups of PG tips a year. Enough to fill some football stadiums. Well, how many? What? I don't know, do I? I'm not the brain of Britain. <laughs> That's a lot of tea. Hang on a minute. That's what this story's all about. The people that grow the stuff. The tea farmers. I've come to this place to meet a woman they say is called Anita. She knows all about tea farmers, apparently. And she's willing to spill the beans. So, Anita, explain yourself using words. I'm from an independent organisation called Rainforest Alliance. What are you suggesting? If we start growing tea in rainforests, that's madness. They'll lock you up. <laughs> Not at all, monkey. We're called Rainforest Alliance because we started off looking after the interests of tropical rainforests many years ago. Mm. All right. That's all right. Do go on. But now we work on sustainability projects all over the world. It's our job. An extra twist of lime. I've done it again, haven't I? It's our... Sorry, go on, carry on. It's our job to help farmers all over the world. Farmers? Tea farmers. I knew it. I need to probe you further, Anita. What are you up to with my pals at PG Tips? Well, PG Tips have always been concerned about the environment and their workers, yeah. uh, but they wanted to do more. So they contacted us, and now we're working together. So how are you going to make sure that their tea is da bomb? The full Monty, the kahuna, down with the kids, booyah shaka! Well, PG Tips is only going to buy tea from plantations that have earned our Green Frog Certificate. This is Kericho, a PG Tips plantation in Kenya. Ah, and how does a plantation get a certificate? Off the internet? No, monkey. Lots of things have to be right. Farmers and their workers have to earn a decent living, they have to have access to things like hospitals and doctors and schools for their children. Rivers need to be protected and wildlife, like birds and monkeys. Elephants? Do you do elephants? <laughs> yeah. Real ones? Yes. Good. Um, only then does the Rainforest Alliance issue a certificate. Oh, that's genius. But, but how will this affect me, Anita, the man on the street? Well, it won't really, but I can tell you that Rainforest Alliance's work has already helped improve the quality of life of one and a half million farmers, farm workers and their families in some 14 countries. Wowza! One and a half million, that's quite a lot, isn't it? This really is big. Here's a thought, Anita. I'll be PG Tips and you'll be Rainforest Alliance. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think that pretty much sums up the whole thing, Anita, don't you? PG Tips and Rainforest Alliance are now very good friends. Yeah, I suppose so. And mention it. Oh, my car's here. Take care, Anita. All the best. <laughs> Where's my car? Is it here? My investigation of success, I headed home with the good news. You and I can help farmers, farm workers and their families around the world by putting the right kind of tea in our cups. It's so easy to do our bit. To your coffee, sir. Is it PG Tips? Yep. Ah, brilliant! After what I've just heard, I think I'll have the tea. In fact, go on, have one yourself. Do you know what, chummy? It's tea o'clock and I'm the tea master. <laughs> choo choo! Tea for everyone! Yeah! Who's your monkey? Who's your monkey? A tale of two continents indeed. 50% of PG Tips tea now comes from Rainforest Alliance certified plantations. By 2010, every cuppa will be fully certified. So come on, folks, from Aberdeen to Aberystwyth, Wandsworth to the Wirral and everywhere in between. Join me and do your bit. <laughs> <laughs>